So um, I want to show you how I roll. So this is where we're going to talk about some equipment and stuff. Um, we'll get there in one second. First, how I roll when I'm traveling. I Google it. There are many times that I haven't Googled where I'm going, and that is not a good thing. So um, we have all these tools, and they're, like especially Pinterest and and all these sites where you know if you're going to travel somewhere, there's so many photographers that post really cool places you can travel to. You can go on Pinterest and look up cool locations to shoot at. Um, Google the weather. Google the religious uh, customs in the area. Um, Google if there's holidays. Um, in my mom's case, she always has that really awkward mother-daughter conversation where she tell, tells me the terrorism report of where I'm going and gives me the number if I get in trouble or arrested to call this number and ask for Bob and don't you know and he'll get me out of trouble. So I have that mother-daughter conversation. <coughs> um, not everyone has that luxury, and so. Um, for me, it's just important to Google where you're going. You have all this information, and I have to say, I'm not going to get in all these stories, but there are many times I've gotten myself in a jam by not Googling where I'm going, like traveling to shoot a wedding in a rainforest and not bringing any rain gear, or, you know, or like just stupid things that you're like, oh, I didn't even think it was going to rain, you know, just something <laughs> like, or the, especially religious customs. Um, we've had to travel through Muslim countries and and do shoots, and yeah, it's like all fun and games when you're running around in a bikini until you go to like a Muslim country. You can't do that, you know? And so you have to not necessarily wear a burqa or anything, but you need to respect their customs, and a lot of places don't even allow women or cameras um, or anything, and you just have to respect where you're going. So Google it, it's really important. What's in my bag? Okay, this is where we're gonna talk about a, few, a couple things real quick. Um, first of all, this, this unfun bag is really cool. It's always important, I usually, and I don't have my big roller bag with me, but I usually travel, everything's carry-on. When I go on a destination shoot, I don't check anything. I don't trust checking anything. I don't trust, you know, something, if God forbid something happens to your equipment, what are you gonna do? You're now, like, you can't even do your job. So, um, I always have two bags. I have a roller bag, just like a regular, you know, luggage bag. Half of it's filled with my clothes, and the other half, I, I stash some of my photo equipment. Because I don't like keeping that all in one bag. I like separating it. Um, I always bring an external hard drive with me and my laptop, and I always keep them in separate bags. In case of my laptop gets stolen, I have everything backed up, vice versa. Um, I keep uh, my spare camera bo body in separate bags, uh, spare flashes, separate bags. So I always divide that up, and then you always have to have like a smaller bag, something like this, probably a little bigger than this. This is kind of cool for like local, for your iPad or whatever, but you can get a bigger version that fits your laptop in it. And the cool thing about this bag is that this, you can put your strap, like your roller bag strap through it and carry it through an airport easily. This thing also rolls so you can wear it on your hip and like use it as a lens sack really easily. Um, and they also, I'm like totally pimping them. They're, by the way, in booth 1434 and they will like embroider your logo if you give them your business logo onto the bag if you buy it, so that's pretty cool. Um, but you need to have a smaller portable bag because there's times that you have to hike around. I actually have, where is my, it's over here. Um, this is my backpack, and I love traveling with this thing too, um, because there's times, like recent times, where Sarah and I were just in uh, Thailand shooting, where we got off at Koh Phi Phi Island, and they don't even have roads, or um, like in order to get your luggage off to your hotel, you have to get out of a fishing boat, like waist deep in the water, and like hold your bags above your head, and walk to, you know, get out to the hotel. So you have to be able to be, um, have your equipment be portable too. It's really important. So, you know, having a, a kind of a side bag like this where if you need to hike or go somewhere with your equipment, you're not bringing some big roller bag or anything like that. Um, so here, I want to talk a little bit about lighting equipment. I shoot mostly natural light. I, I love natural light. I have all the L lenses. I shoot at 1.2, whatever. I do whatever it takes to shoot with natural light, but I love having lighting equipment, and a lot of times you need it. Um, especially if you want to do some fun day after shoots and you know fashion style editorial shoots. So what I have been traveling with before is this what I like to call the Unabomber briefcase, which is not fun to bring through an airport. Um, this thing's awesome though because it's I'm sure they're here too. But it's an Ellen Chrome, and what's cool about it is that it's portable. Um, it comes with the battery. Pa the pack is only this big. And it comes with two separate batteries that are this big that hook into it. So if you charge them ahead of time, you can be anywhere. Um, we were on a floating reed island in the middle of Lake Titicaca with no electricity, and I was able to do a full, uh, you know, two days of shooting with this. 
Um, and it comes with two things. Oh, it's Ellen Chrome. This thing, here you guys, I don't know if you can see it, Ellen Chrome. Um, Sammy sells these, so same as it's here. I'm sure you guys could get a good deal. Um, and these lights are super light and they're portable and they're easy. And you just plug it in and you can hang the battery from anything. Um, you can be standing in the middle of water and you're not going to electrocute yourself. So that's awesome. Um, they're, these things are great, but like I said, sometimes traveling through an airport is not like fun with it. Um, it is, you know, kind of a blocky thing to travel around, and I definitely wouldn't trust checking it ever. But if you need lights on a shoot, it's the best travel portrait, like portable travel kit, like we need strobes. But what I wanted to showcase today is the GL1 hot light. We've got Andy Marcus in the back. Um, he and his son and John Solano have developed this light, um, and they're in booths. Tell me what your booth is again. The Tiffin booth. Um, they just showed this light. So this light it looks like a power drill or like a flashlight. But honestly, this thing fits in your bag. Um, if you go through customs and they're like, what is that? Which I'm sure they'll do. Then you just tell them it's a flashlight or whatever. Because the other thing, too, is if you bring lighting equipment and you're traveling with it, they love to charge you um, in customs. And they can. Because all of a sudden, you're, you're changing from like a regular photographer to a professional. Like, you're still professional, but they once they see lighting equipment, it sends off red flags, and they, they want you to pay a lot of customs fees. I mean, they tried to charge me $1,200 to bring those briefcase light, lights in. And luckily, I knew Spanish and was like, but I love your country, and I just wanted to take pictures. And I just kind of played that. And I'm like, please. And I'm like, OK. So, but, um, but you know, it's not always that easy, and it's not fun. So you could avoid all that kind of stuff with this light. The cool thing about this light is that it's not a strobe. It's all battery pack. It's portable. But when you turn it on, it's a gun light. So like right now, and it's really powerful. So you can, they have a tripod mount here. So you can honestly put this on, lock it, and you can focus the beam of light, zoom it in, or make it wide. And it's really amazing, great quality of light. It's almost like that Hollywood lighting. Um, so if you were in a jam, even if you were by yourself and you put this on a tripod and like lock it down, you could have some really cool fashion style lighting. You can light all kinds of stuff with just the simple um, hot light. So I love that. And the second they told me, so I, I met them in the Engage conference in the Cayman Islands, and uh, when they told me they were developing this, I'm like, OK, put me on. I can't wait to have this in my bag, because I, I, mean, I can't even tell you how many times you're in a jam and you need something. You just Can need you to be able to play. Again, the GL1 hot light. So the website is actually gl1hotlight.com. They are doing, um, they actually have a class, a platform class tomorrow that Brian and Andy Marcus at 8.30, right? 8.30 in the morning. Um, and they're going to be doing a full demonstration about this light and showing their beautiful work. So um, I honestly think that it's worth having in your bag. It's definitely worth having in your bag. About how long does the battery last on that? That's a good question. I think you can answer that right now. About an hour. Cool. I don't know. If you can do an entire wedding with one battery. But you can, you can change the batteries. Yeah, because you're not like leaving it on for, you know, you're using it to spotlight. And it's, it's helpful if you have like an assistant, someone that can hold it. But um, if you put it on a tripod, then obviously you leave it on longer and the battery will die quicker. But um, you can just do a lot of really creative things. You can have more than one of those and be doing different spotlights and different, you know, you can make one more focus light, one wider, you know, do the background with one light. And, you know, there's all kinds of really fun things you could do with, with these. So I wish I'd had these when I went to Peru, but anyway. <laughs> Um, all right, moving on. So that, oh, the other, one more thing. I didn't bring it though. Turn it. Always keep a sarong in your bag. I don't think that'll work for you men. <laughs> so for, for women though, I can't even tell you. Something like that. Um, the many, many purposes of a sarong. Um, we just traveling, like there's times you're in a jam and you need to cover up your, your legs and your shoulders like you're going into a temple or something like that. Or you want to just add a fun pop of color to a picture. Um, Sarah and I sometimes will go buy like colored fabric or just cool things, just something easy that you can roll up in your bag that would just add something to a photo by giving it to your model or like throwing wrapping it around something or you know they're like we just always are trying to find cool things that we can bring as like props or like cool jewelry or fun stuff that we can um, add into our pictures. Um, I just think that it's always helpful to to have some of that stuff ahead of time. All right, so business or pleasure or both. Um, I always like to say both, um, but the what I mean by this is that when you are going on a business trip, you should stay a few extra days for fun and be able to do like a side fun shoot on your own and vice versa. If you're going on a trip like a holiday, 
stay a few extra days and do like a, a shoot that could help your business. And what I like to do and how I've gotten a lot of my destination weddings or work is that I will, again, Google a location I'm going to. Like let's say I'm going to Lake Como and um, I'll look up a wedding coordinator, someone over there and say, hey, I'm gonna be in Lake Como. Um, I'm already gonna be like shooting X, Y, Z. I would, I've heard so much about you. I'd love to work with you. Um, would you have time to do like a fun shoot together? I'd love to collaborate with you. Um, it's cool to call somebody like that because you're not like just calling them up like, oh my gosh, I'd love to shoot in Lake Como. Can you send me work? Cause that's their like, who's this person, you know? So it's, it's cool if you can call somebody or a hotel and just say, hey, I'm already gonna be there. Here's my website, I'm a professional photographer. I'd be more than happy to do a shoot or like help you out. So I've had, I, I did that in Lake Como and we got to stay for free, my boyfriend and I, at two very luxurious resorts in exchange for doing some photos for them just by reaching out to them and just by saying, you know, hey, we're gonna be in the area. And it's led to them introducing us to wedding coordinators out there and you know, it, it just, you have to put yourself out there. And so the best way to do that is to try to collaborate. So that's like my word, like collaborate. So you wanna try to, um, you know, don't just cold call people or just, you know, anything like that. It's always, you're always better in numbers and better as a team if you try to like pair up with people over there. Um, but it's the best way, again, because it's a catch-22. You're not gonna be able to shoot someone or book, or book a job somewhere if you don't have work from that location. So, I mean, you can, but it's hard. So if you want to shoot in Lake Como, you need to get pictures in Lake Como, and sometimes you need to like just make it happen on your own, and then now you can take that shoot that you do with that coordinator, she's going to blog about it, you're going to blog about it, you can like submit it to magazines, you can do all this stuff, and all of a sudden, you're like this photographer that shoots all the time in Lake Como, you know, even though you've just been there one time and, and did this shoot on your own.